How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be continuing What If Goku Mastered Spirit Control, which is still one of my favorite series I've done on this channel, so I'm really glad I get to continue it today. If you missed the last part of this series or just need to catch up on this series as a whole, click the link up above to view the playlist and get all caught up. If you guys like this part and want to see the next one faster, let's see if we can get this video to 700 likes. That would help me out a whole lot. Before we begin too, I just want to give a huge shout out to all of my amazing patrons, as we have Dreadpool, Patrick Sandlin, Mr. Darkness, Zero Finessen, John Lister, Jared, Robert Gregory, and Andy. All of you are amazing, and this support really helps keep this channel going. If you guys want a lot of special perks like my amazing patrons, then make sure you go ahead and join my Patreon page down below. The link's in the description if you want to go check it out. Anyways, let's get right into this video. Last time, we finished up with Android 17, killing Frieza, and begin training with Gohan, Goten, and Trunks. Gohan has trained with 17 for a good chunk of his childhood, so training them now isn't the worst training regimen of all time. It's actually pretty refreshing being able to get a workout in again, and achieve Super Saiyan 2 yet again. He doesn't get up to his true power right away, as he's only just begun training again, and 17 is a great master, due to him really pushing Gohan. He pushes Goten and Trunks as well, which is why they managed to get Super Saiyan 2. But since Gohan is an adult, 17 pushes him way harder. That way, if any other threat comes around, he'll be able to actually do something. On Beerus' planet, Goku and Vegeta have continued to train with Whis, and have mastered their ultimate Super Saiyan God transformation. In this scenario as well, we're not going to be introducing Super Saiyan Blue, and we'll just stick with God. Now, I'm not doing this just because I don't like Blue or anything, but it just makes a lot more sense for this story. See, Goku and Vegeta have been using their ultimate form as their base form now, and as we've seen from Gohan and Canon, this ultimate power is much more beneficial than using any variation of Super Saiyan. We especially see that in the episode where Piccolo trains Gohan before the Tournament of Power. With this ultimate power, there is no need for Goku or Vegeta to use Super Saiyan anymore, and Blue and Canon is an evolved Super Saiyan with Godly Key. Though here, since they have no reason to use Super Saiyan, they'll just stick with evolving their ultimate form with their God powers infused within it. This won't make them much weaker either, as right now they're way above their Super Saiyan Blue power from canon. So, as long as they keep evolving this power, they'll be fine for any future threats. Speaking of future threats, Champa finally arrives and puts forth the idea of the Universe 6 vs Universe 7 tournament. These interactions would play out pretty much exactly the same as canon, and Goku and Vegeta got to get some more participants. They would of course go to the Supreme Kai's world to recruit Piccolo, who would join along easily. And now they just need to get one last participant. Beer still decides to waste a slot with Manaka in this timeline, so we now have only one option left. We have Gohan or 17. Gohan has been taking more and more time off of work to train to 17, and fortunately for our heroes, Gohan is able to push this important conference to next week, so he can actually take place in a tournament. 17 once again doesn't come along because, of course, he needs to protect his island from any threats. Gohan is brought along to fight, and the tournament begins. The matches would actually play out exactly as in canon up until when Goku loses to Frost. He still uses his Poison Needle to take out Goku, and the next fighter to come along is going to be Piccolo. Though Piccolo this time is much more powerful than his canon counterpart. Remember, Piccolo's been training with all of the Supreme Kais for quite a few years, and knows some very interesting moves that can outdo Frost even when he tries to use his Poison Needle. Doesn't help Frost either that Piccolo is always in his own ultimate form as well. Piccolo is smart enough to keep far away from Frost. That way he isn't knocked out so fast just like Goku was. Luckily throughout their fight, Jocko notices the needle Piccolo is trying to avoid, and Frost is eliminated for cheating. With Frost gone and Piccolo not being knocked out at all, he gets to stay in the tournament. Magetta is the next combatant to come and fight, and I feel Piccolo would have a very similar match as the gigantic robot dude, and it would end with Piccolo just accidentally insulting him, and Magetta crying his eyes out because of it. Very odd way to win a fight, but hey, it still counts. The next match is against Kaba, with this not really being the most fair of fights for the Saiyan. Piccolo obviously can't be the one to show Kaba how to become a Super Saiyan, since he isn't one himself for obvious reasons. And Kaba never even saw Goku go Super Saiyan against Frost, as he used his ultimate form instead. So, Kaba will never even know it exists, and thus, would never feel the need to learn it. He is easily taken out in no time flat by Piccolo, and the final warrior for Universe 6 enters the arena. The Assassin, Hit. Even with all of Piccolo's new power and techniques, he is very tired from his previous matches. And since Hit is at full power, Piccolo is eliminated very quickly. Gohan is the next one up to fight, with him not as powerful as Piccolo yet, so he's not very confident being able to win this by himself. He doesn't need to exactly win this though, 
as throughout the battle, Gohan is able to observe everything that Hit is doing regarding the time skipping, and is able to pass his knowledge off to the remaining warriors. Sure, Gohan wasn't able to get any good hits in on Hit, but he was basically able to expose his attack pattern. Meaning, when Gohan is eventually knocked out, Vegeta knows exactly what to do now. Vegeta transforms into his ultimate Super Saiyan God, and as his fight with Hit, similar to the strategy Goku pulled off in the manga version of the tournament, Vegeta is able to outpace Hit with his time skip, and with this insanely powerful God form, he's even able to exceed Hit and his time skip. Plus, the multi-form technique, self-healing, and every other spirit control move that Vegeta knows is a huge factor in him getting this victory. As all these wacky techniques keep Hit very busy and has him suffer a lot more hits than he would have normally. All of this beatdown gets to Hit eventually, and he loses his match, meaning Universe 7 is now the winner. The group congratulate each other on winning this thing, and Goku is disappointed in himself for falling out of bounds right away, and then not being able to fight more. But hey, there's always another tournament that may come up in the future. The wish is made onto Super Dragon Balls to restore Universe 6's Earth like in canon, and life goes on pretty much back to normal. With the Universal Tournament ended, our Z Fighters return home to continue their daily training. Of course, we should naturally move on to the next arc, which is the Goku Black arc. This arc is going to be a very tricky one to use in this story, however, for a whole number of reasons. First off, Sumasu wouldn't be taking over Goku's body, and we would get Vegeta Black. Since in the Universe 6 tournament, Vegeta showed off his godly powers and not Goku. So Zamasu would take over Vegeta's body, since he's been using godly ki to mock the gods. What's he going to do after that, though? Go into the future and terrorize the lone survivor Trunks? Well, if you remember from part 2, Trunks' future is a very bright one, as everybody besides Goku was brought back to live a peaceful life. The villains who would come to this future Earth would be taken out in no time, meaning this timeline already has its own god of destruction. When Bobby and Nabor eventually came to Earth, they were easily taken out by the warriors of the future, meaning Shin got to survive. Even though Beerus never really woke up in this timeline, he is still around somewhere sleeping, so Zamasu knows going into this timeline would be a huge mistake on his part. Meaning, instead of coming to the future, Black would stay in the present. And one day, while Goku and Vegeta are sparring with each other on Earth, Vegeta suddenly transforms. Not into any of his Super Saiyan forms at all, but his whole physique changes. He morphs into some weird, green-looking guy, which distracts Goku quite a bit, and just completely worries the two of them. As they try to figure out what the hell just happened, Vegeta Black arrives to go ahead and kill Vegeta in his body. But luckily though, Goku steps in the way to block Black's attack, and asks what the hell is going on? Black just keeps laughing in Goku's face as he fights off the Saiyan while trying to get to Vegeta. Vegeta looks at himself and realizes what has happened here. This random guy swapped bodies with him, and is now using his own power as a plaything, as a puppet. How is that right at all? Vegeta yells out to Goku what Black is doing, and after hearing what Vegeta said, Goku knows the best way to get out of this situation. Goku knocks Black towards the ground, and begins to use his forced spirit fission on him. Now, we don't really know if this would actually work with Goku Black, but I feel like since Zamasu completely took over Vegeta's body in this scenario, and the fact that Vegeta is also still right there, I feel like Goku would look into his soul and be able to actually rip it out of Goku Black with forced spirit fission. Now again, it, this might not be how spirit fission works, but... I'm gonna say that it actually is, because it's working with the spirit as it's right in the name. So I feel like being able to take this spirit out of somebody else, who's not in the original body, and put it back in the original body, would make complete sense for how the move works. So Goku's able to quickly swap these two souls out for one another. Vegeta is back in his original body, while Zamasu weakly stands up back in his original body as well, and he stares at the two Saiyans in complete horror. How the hell did that Saiyan manage to do something like that? He worked so hard to get the Super Dragon Balls to make the wish, and it got instantly taken away from him? Vegeta is completely pissed now, and he rushes towards Zamasu, and he fires a Big Bang attack, completely annihilating the Kai. Goku asks if that was really necessary, as I have no clue who this guy was or what his motives were. And Vegeta snaps at Goku, saying, how would he like it if somebody else was using his body to... Oh, yeah, he already does know how that works. Anyways, with Zamasu dead already, and the fact that there's no time travel around either, this saga ends very nicely, since Zamasu is already in the picture in like two seconds due to the amazing spirit vision technique. And we can move on to the next arc now, which is the beginning of the Tournament of Power. The tournament prep would be brought up early by Goku, since Vegeta Black wasn't much of a challenge, and he wants to have another good battle in a tournament once again. The team for this tournament really wouldn't be too different, and the only one that I feel would be kinda sketchy is Frieza. 
Goku never saw how powerful Frieza became, as he wasn't on Earth at the time of his revival, and Frieza never really revealed his true potential of his golden form, since Seventeen killed him before he could reveal it. So, why would Goku try to recruit Frieza? I don't think he would. Sure, he was told that Frieza survived and that he got stronger, but since Seventeen was able to kill him in like, two seconds, how strong can he actually be? He'd be more of a hindrance on a team than anything. And with no Boo here, there's no 10th member already. So, who would a 10th member be then? Well, Goku does think of Goten and Trunks fighting on the team, but if he does ask them, he can't get one without the other, as that wouldn't exactly be fair. But what if he could get both of them at once though? He looks at the Patara earrings that he pulled out of his pocket, and he smiles. That's it! If Goten and Trunks are able to fuse, then they'll have themselves a 10th fighter. Whis told him that the tournament is only 45 minutes anyways, and this fusion should last a whole hour. So as long as they fuse right before the tournament, they'll be able to fight during the whole thing. Goku goes up to the two boys and explains to them the process of fusion, and how much stronger the two will become, as one. Goten and Trunks think fusing is super awesome, and it'll let them fight in a tournament so they're 100% down to do it. Right before the group leaves for the tournament, Goku gives the two boys the earrings, and wishes them luck. The boys put it onto their opposite ears and fly directly towards each other, merging their bodies together, and creating... a character that we'll meet next episode. <laughs> gotcha. If you guys want to see this new fusion of Goten and Trunks much faster, and the whole event of the Tournament of Power, then make sure to like this video and subscribe, that way I can begin working on it. You all are awesome, and until we meet again you guys, see you later!